for us. Jeannie, thanks. Republican Van Taylor is running for a House seat in President Bush's home district in Texas. He is also a veteran of the war in Iraq. Mr. Taylor, good morning to you, and thanks for being with us. Good morning for the heart of Texas, Lester. Let me get you to weigh in on Senator Kerry's comment, not only on his comments, but the notion that he says it was a joke, that it was it was botched, that a word was left out, he's really taking a shot at the president. Do you give him that, or do you take him at what he said, not what he meant to say? I personally am deeply offended. I served 10 years in the Marine Corps. I've graduated twice from Harvard with honors. And to have uh, you know the Democrat nominee for president in 2004 come out and say that uh, only the uneducated and the stupid are the people that stand up and defend our country is not only false, it's insulting to myself and every other person that's ever put on a uniform and fought to defend our country. L let me ask you this, though. If you allow that what he said was offensive, if you allow that it was a stupid comment, what does it have to do with any of the issues that are going to drive my vote and everyone else's vote on Tuesday? Well, I, I'm, I'm expressing outrage as a veteran uh, who served our country uh, in uniform. Other veterans, uh, such as myself, uh, have expressed their indignation as to Senator Kerry's comments. Uh, I'm appalled. I'm appalled that he would say that, and I'm even more shocked that he refuses to apologize for something that ver almost everybody I can no, talk I, to. I, uh, I appreciate your offense, and you're, you're taking him at what he said, not what he says he meant. But, but, but back to the bigger question. We're spending a lot of time talking about this, and in terms of what the, what the voters were saying up until yesterday is that the, the direction of the war is what concerns them. So, so does this have anything to do with what should be driving people's vote, and if so, how? Well, I, I mean, you look at what... Our nation's military is the greatest military in the world. It is literally undefeatable on the field of battle with the forces that we're fighting right now. These al-Qaeda forces and terrorist forces in Iraq, we, they, they can't beat us militarily. Their only hope is to get people like John Kerry and, uh, and Nancy Pelosi and get someone like Nancy Pelosi to become Speaker of the House and try to undercut our will to defend ourselves. And I'm personally shocked that Senator Kerry uh, has such little regard for the men and women who serve, the, who serve our country in uniform and are risking their lives. Uh, I would submit to you that the people that are defending our freedom in Iraq today are the best and brightest of our society. And, and let me we just should be proud of every one of them and not putting them down. Let me just note that, that it's not just a Republican sentiment. We're just hearing that uh, uh, Harold Ford, a, a candidate for Senate in Tennessee, a Democratic candidate, has issued a press release saying that Kerry should apologize. We'll have more on that. But I, I want to turn, if I can, the conversation with you about your race in Texas. It's, sure. it's the home of the Crawford Ranch. Uh, Democrat has held that seat for a long time. It is mm -hmm. a very Republican district at the same time. And you're not doing well. Uh, and and a lot of, there was a lot of hopes in the Republican Party they might be able to, to steal this seat. What's going on there? I'm, I'm working hard every day and getting a great response against my Democrat incumbent who wants to see Nancy Pelosi become Speaker of the House. And we have a lot of differences. I mean, he wants higher taxes and more government. I want to see lower taxes and less government. Uh, he's pro-choice. I'm pro-life. He believes in gun control. I believe in gun rights. I believe I'm being tough on immigration. He's pretty weak on immigration. And you both so, support the war, right? There, there's not a lot of daylight between the two of us. I, clearly, I'm the better person to go and make sure we win the war because I've served 10 years in the Marine Corps. Uh, and, you know, there was a time in our country when many members of Congress, most, in fact, had served in the military. But sadly, those days are past. And there are only 25 members of the entire U.S. Congress that have any combat experience at all. And if we don't send some new people to Washington, some people that have real-world experience dealing with the battles that we face around the world, uh, we're not going to do as well facing the greatest challenge of our generation, which is winning this war on terror. Listen, Van Taylor, we have to end right there, but thank you so much for spending some time with us. It was good talking to you.